Hello and welcome. The first time I shared a message with you in this way was during the first lockdown last spring. I was sat in the garden on that lovely day and I don't know if you remember a robin coming out from the bushes briefly onto the lawn and causing great laughter on one of the recordings I shared. Maybe Mr Robin will make another appearance today on this pleasant winter's day. I could not imagine last spring we would still be in this situation when we are in a lockdown in all but name. But our churches are still open. However, as a result of our locality being placed into Tier 4, restrictions so soon after entering Tier 3 on Boxing Day, I wanted to update you on how I see things at St Cross. We are in a rapid change of circumstances, such as the gravity of the situation facing our country at this present time. Due to this rapid change, I spoke at length on Zoom last night with Graham, our church warden, and Simon, our curate to discuss what our response, if any, should be. I should clarify that the guidance for places of worship within tears has not changed and public worship can continue in all tiers in line with government guidance and the advice. I do believe this is an acknowledgement of the measures that places of worship are implementing to allow people to attend their places of worship safely. I think it's also a recognition of the importance of the spiritual and mental well-being of individuals for whom faith is so precious. At our meeting last night all options were considered by us and we did seriously consider simply closing the church for a period of time. But the general consensus of our discussion was that we should continue to offer public worship because of all the measures that are currently in place. Hygiene and social distancing are the best defence against the virus and its variant that is now wreaking havoc in our country. Having said that, even with these measures in place, we should be mindful that there is no 100% guarantee of not catching the virus. Having decided to continue for the time being with public worship, we did agree that there needs to be a change of practice in order to maintain the maximum possible safety in our church building. Now I appreciate as much as anyone how difficult it is not to be sociable. But the government guidelines are clear. People can attend places of worship for a service. But they should not mingle with anyone outside of their household or support bubble and strict social distancing should be maintained at all times. Therefore, after the organ voluntary has played at the end of a Sunday service or at the end of any other service, people should remain in their seats until the attendant has indicated to them that they should leave the building. We will be dismissing people row by row, working from the back and the front simultaneously, using the closest door where possible. Those members of the ministry team who are on duty at that particular service will be available at either door to take a note if a pastoral follow -up phone call is needed. We shouldn't be engaging in protracted conversations at the doors. 
we will also remind people of the need to sanitise hands coming into the church and leaving. It's so easy to forget this and to become a little complacent. And we need to try and remember too to sanitise hands before and after receiving Holy Communion. And we'll give gentle reminders about this too. I would also add at this point that if you're involved in the ministry of the church in any way, be that in a spiritual sense or in a practical role, such as an attendant, and you feel uncomfortable in fulfilling your role at this particular time, I, I would urge you to advise Graham or myself so that we can take the necessary action. We don't want anyone to feel obligated or unsafe in any way. And likewise, if you're not in a vulnerable category, is this the time to consider stepping forward to help out occasionally as an attendant? Looking ahead, Graham, Simon and I will be meeting online weekly to monitor the situation and I do reserve the right to close the church if I deem that that is the most appropriate measure for ourselves, irrespective of government or national church guidance. As a country, the next few weeks are going to be very difficult until the vaccine can become more widely distributed. But it does seem that the light is at the end of the tunnel. I know it's been extremely hard for some of you. For those of you in our church community who have been isolated for so long. But I do believe we will come out of this pandemic in a position of strength rather than weakness. As Her Majesty the Queen said to the nation on Christmas Day, we are not alone. And we are most definitely not alone. As Jesus promised, he would always be with us. The Holy Spirit is not confined to the church building. And I would suggest in these times to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him whilst he is near. It's the best thing we can try to do. I was quoting Isaiah 55 verse 6. What I'm saying in all of this is that no one should feel any obligation or sense of duty to come to the church at the present time, especially, especially as we have the means um, to offer the online ministry for those who can access this. What I would add is that if you are staying away from church and using our online worship, Please consider joining us at 10 o'clock on the Sunday or the Wednesday if you can. It, it maintains a sense of spiritual discipline still, but it also unites us together as a family at that particular time. Equally, I recognise too the importance of coming to church in person to pray and to worship as a community and the value of being with other human beings in a personal sense when we spent many long hours in our homes shut away. I want people to feel entirely comfortable in what they choose to do. I'd like to close by wishing you all a happy new year. A new year that we can face with a growing sense of optimism. I guess we will all look back at 2020 and we'll want to write the year off. We should always try and search for the positive. As you see this wintry scene behind me, it reminds me of the lion, the witch and the wardrobe and of the winter in Narnia. The summer does come when Aslan returns. And our summer is going to come too. In the meantime, let us continue to be mindful of those 
who are having a much tougher time than ourselves and to remember those in our parish who are finding it particularly difficult and we should try and keep in contact by whatever means necessary. We should continue to pray for those people responsible for the vaccine rollout and those working in the high pressure areas of the hospitals who are really struggling, physically and mentally exhausted. And we should do all we can to help them by following all guidance. So shall we close with a prayer together? Let us pray. Lord of compassion, be close to those who are still afraid or in isolation. In that loneliness be their consolation. In their anxiety be their hope. In their darkness be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory. We pray too for all those people who are now working so hard to try and make sure this vaccine is rolled out efficiently and as quickly as possible to all those who need it so badly. We pray for our health service workers in surgeries and in hospitals and, and district nurses and we remember those especially who are working at the front line and are feeling so exhausted at this time. Come to renew their strength Lord and surround them with your love and protection at this time. In Jesus name Amen. The Lord be with you.